Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the player camera manager? Play camera anim node. Let's run our quick little example. This is a generic character. When I hit play anim, it's going to start the player camera. Play camera anim node. And it's going to run the camera anim that I've created. And basically it's going to rock it back and forth. So let's look at how this works. The play camera anim node, and as you can see it's a big old beastie, is off of the get player camera manager. It is part of the player camera. So if we pull it off and we look for the camera animation, we'll find the four of them. And the one we want is the play camera anim. And these are the default settings. And we'll go ahead and cover those. The point of the node for the play camera anim is to simply play a camera anim asset. I have created a camera anim asset we'll be using. As you can see here, it's just going to rotate the X, which is why we get a little bit of our bobbing motion. So for the inputs, we have the target. The target, of course, will be our player camera manager because it needs to know which camera it's going to play this animation on. Remember when you're playing back a camera anim, it is in local space. Any of the settings on your camera anim, your translation, your rotation, your color adjustments are relative to the current position, rotation, etc. on your camera. It's not in world space. The anim is going to be the, am the camera anim reference. In this case, I have two of them created. We can select like, for example, generic camera anim two, and it's gonna play that one back. The rate is the rate at which it plays. If we pull up camera anim 2 and we look at it, we have roughly one second. So it's going to play over one second. If we were to adjust this to 0.5, it'll play at half speed to full speed. It's the rate of animation. Scale is how intense. If we pull up our camera anim and we look at, for example, we'll put this on our graph and we'll look at the values that we've assigned here. If, if it'll let me, there we go. We have a value of one. That means at half a second, it's going to translate one in the X value. If we were to change our scale to two, then we're going to, going to multiply it by two. Scale of three is multiplied by three. So it's a multiplier on your values inside your camera anim. It's useful, for example, if you have a head bobby motion, you may play, you may record the head bobby motion at normal speed for walking and then adjust the scale based on the run speed of the player so it becomes more violent as they run quicker, which slightly mimics real life a little better. Blend in time and blend out time are the times for ramping in and out for the animation starting and stopping. Let me go ahead and disconnect this one and we'll go ahead and run our normal camera anim so we can check this out. Now I'm gonna change my scale back to one and hit play, close my matinee, and we'll hit play. And you may notice this is a very, very subtle shift. I'm only moving 0.15 in each direction, which is why I've adjusted my scale. So when I adjust my scale to 10 now and hit play, you'll notice a much violent, much more violent rocking. Now let's adjust the blend in time and blend out time. Let's adjust the blend in to one and we'll hit play. And you notice it's no longer as smooth. Because my camera anim is set to loop, what's happening is it's taking roughly a second to ramp up to the full speed for blending in. If I change it back to one for the out, you'll notice we have a slight issue. When I hit play with the ramp up, you'll notice instead of immediately going to my extremes, it's going to slowly start turning. We'll make our scale much larger to make this more pronounced. We'll hit play. There we go. Now you'll notice after roughly half a second, it will hit the full rotational value rather than at the start. And then at the end of our animation, it'll hit the full rotational value after roughly half a second. So by default, blending is zero. And that's basically going to give you the full effect right when you start. You want it to follow the timeline exactly. Blend in time of a value between zero and one, the how much time it's basically going to take to ramp up to the full values. It's only useful if, for example, you have something set to a loop or you have a longer timeline. And it's useful if you want maybe a more subtle effect because, again, these are inputs. You can adjust them. Maybe you have an animation of a player getting hit. 
like a shockwave from an explosion. Instead of just adjusting the scale to be more or less intense based on the proximity, let's say it is farther away, you can set a blend out time of a half a second or a second, and you can let it slowly ramp up so that way the player doesn't immediately get a jar. But if it happens right on top of them, you may want zero blend in and just have their screen completely shake. The next option is loop, and it's pretty simple. We run it without the loop, it's going to happen once. That's it, that plays my animation. You have it looped, and it's going to continue playing until you tell it to stop. Random start time, basically at some point in time during our play, it's going to pick a start. If we pull up our camera anim, we'll notice here we have approximately one second for the camera anim. Zero to one here. Oops, this is the, yeah, this is the right one, okay. So we have basically roughly one second for our camera anim. Oh, actually we have longer, which I should have moved this one over. There we go. We have 1.33 seconds for our camera anim. If I can get it to cooperate. Oh, there we go. We have approximately 1.33 seconds, one and a third seconds. If we have the random start time checked here, it's basically going to pick some point in here to start playing and then continue. So you notice when I hit play now with it checked, it's not necessarily going to start doing a smooth animation from the beginning because it's not starting at the zero position. It's picking a random position to start at on my timeline and that could be anywhere on my timeline. Duration. This is going to change basically how long it should play for. Let's say we don't want it to play for the full amount. Let's go with duration of 0.5. We'll hit play. Now you notice it only plays up to that 0.5 half a second mark. And if we pull it up, that means it's going to play to roughly here. And we put that on our graph, 0.5 is going to be here. It's going to basically go down and almost come back to full before it snaps back to the starting position. That's because we've told it to have a duration other than full. Zero is going to be basically use the animation time or infinite if you have infinite turned on. This is the play space. Remember how I mentioned it's playing in the local camera space? That's because that's the default. Now you can change it. You can have it to play in the world space. And if you do that, you can end up getting some slight issues because my player here, his rotation, as you can see here, and here, and his location, these are altered. So I have a rotation of Z of 70, and my location is in different places. Plus my player itself may be rotated inside of its blueprint. So usually you wanna play the camera based on the local space. So when I play this, I get my rotation like I expect. If you change this to the world space, you're gonna go ahead and get it playing back in world space, which means you may get some odd behavior. But if you want that, you do have the option. User defined is basically the same thing as world space, except you're gonna go ahead and be able to define it down here. So if we went to user defined and hit play, you'll notice it's not adjusting it. And if we wanted it maybe up higher, we could go with something like 100 and go back to our play and bind our play. Where did I do it? Oh, I probably started a new window and hit play. And you'll notice it's now offset on 100 on the Z. So we get a different effect. These are all user defined. These are all optional things, obviously, because it comes with camera space local. But feel free to change them if your camera anim needs to be adjusted as needed. Now we only have one output. The output is simple. It is a variable that is of type camera anim instance. That is something important to note. This is not creating a camera anim reference, but it is creating a camera anim inst reference. So when you are attempting to stop it, for example, you're going to be trying to stop the camera anim inst or instance. And of course, you're going to want to promote this to a variable and keep it as a variable for later use because you're going to need it when you want to stop it. That is it. And that is going to wrap up our play camera anim node. Camera anims are great when you want to add subtle effects to your camera, and because it is normally in world sp normally in local space, it's great to add a slight effect when you're trying to do things. The play node is great because it has a plethora of inputs here and allows you to easily adjust things in terms of how 
effective it is, how much of a shock it is. And it's great for real-time use, like an explosion effect for a camera shake. One thing of note, the camera that it affects is going to be whatever set up for the player camera manager. Now, for my example, you're seeing it in third person. So you're getting more of the effect of like a person looking through the camera. But it can be used for other types of cameras. Say you have a fixed position camera like in a real-time strategy game where it's hovering above the ground. There's no reason you can't use a camera shake to add a little bit of effect when you explode. Maybe there's a large bomb and you add a little bit of a camera effect. Maybe there's massive explosions, you add more camera effect. Just give it a little bit of play.